Welcome to Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. I'm Dr. Edmund Sulkowski, and let's welcome today our special guest, Kimberly June. Kimberly, welcome to Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. Thanks, it's a Ed. pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Kimberly is, is proprietor of the Center for Holistic Therapy, and you're in McMurray. Yes. And then you have another office location? In the North Hills. The North Hills. Mm -hmm. So you pretty much cover the greater Pittsburgh area. I do. Mm -hmm. Would you give us a little bit of background? I know you're, you have a degree from uh, the University of Pittsburgh. Yes. And you're, you're licensed in the state of Pennsylvania for? I'm a clinical social worker. And what does that entail? Uh, that does, I, I'm a person who does psychotherapy with people with mental illness or just difficult, issues of difficulty in living. And there are a lot of difficulties out there. There are a lot there of difficulties today. out there. Yeah. And, so, and sometimes if, if we're not giving it to ourselves, we're getting it from other people <laughs> and right. other bureaucracies. So there's a lot right. of, there are a lot of challenges in the world There are a today. lot of challenges, and life can be hard. It can be hard, and, and, and a lot of the times, those mental issues impact our health. They do. And in, in, in lies where you, the therapies that's where that I you do. In. Yes. So, so tell us some of the therapies that you give to okay. the, your clients. Okay. Um, I, I, I also want to add that I'm also licensed in the state of Pennsylvania as a massage therapist. Okay, which is important. Right. So I do um, mind, body, and spirit transformational psychotherapy. Um, you have to so define what does that, that for mean, us. Yeah, right? That's a big one. It's a big one. Um, I began my career as a psychotherapist, and I was in practice for 15 years. Um, and I focused mostly on um, helping people heal from trauma and... Um, long-standing depression, anxiety, chronic disorders like that. And then after a period of time, I realized that talking to people wasn't enough, that real transformational change occurs in the body, and it also occurs in the energy field that surrounds the body. So you say energy field, and it, I gotta be frank with you, Kimberly, years ago in my early life, mm -hmm. um, I would have laughed at that energy field and everything, but right. I, in my challenges with life, my health, in my research, uh, my enlightenment, we can call it, I've come to realize that our body is nothing but energy. That's correct. We, we give off fields. We, we medically can, can measure those. They're quantitative. Yes. We have instruments that tell us our EEG, which is our electrical field of, uh, mm -hmm. of parts of our body, our EKG for our heart and brain, all of these things. And, and in fact, I have a device a medical device mm -hmm. that I can place on parts of the body a different really near where the chakras are which years ago I had no idea what a chakra is or chakra I guess is the correct mm -hmm. pronunciation uh, but we place that device and it actually measures an ele electrical field coming out from those energies that's right points and uh, so we are nothing but an electrical field that's right and we our cells all live off of energy and hold electricity that's right uh, I mean hold oxygen as a result of that electricity right. which makes us healthy so uh, I just wanted the audience to understand what, what you meant by that energy. Right. So the energy is more connected to our spiritual nature. And um, the physical body, of course, is a direct uh, manifestation of our spiritual nature. And the mind intersects and interacts with the physical body. And between the two of them, they make up who we are. So we are a mind, body, and spirit being. Absolutely. Okay. So I discovered that there's a body below the talking head. Mm -hmm. So as a psychotherapist, I talked with people and we would get nice changes, but we didn't have deep transformational change until I began to work with the body. And when I began to work with the body and integrate that with the psychotherapy, then I discovered, oh my goodness, there's a whole spiritual side um, to the person that is not being addressed. And I'm not talking a religious side. I'm talking our spiritual nature as a being walking on this planet um, that may have eternal life, right? So um, when you integrate all three, you can tap into any pathway within the person that is ready to change. That's key because if somebody's not ready, it's not going to happen, am I That's right? That's correct. Yeah, so they have to be ready and willing to... To, to change. To, to, to listen, even. And it, yes, but mostly to be ready to change. Ready to change. And my, one of my teachers said, if you have a teacup, and the teacup's turned over, if you pour tea on the teacup, it's not going to go in. So part of what I do is I help people turn the teacup this way. So that when I pour the tea in, which is the new learning or the, the education about themselves as a mind-body-spirit, um, the teacup can hold some of that water 
or some of that tea. And um, then be change can begin to happen. So part of our work is learning how to turn yeah. the And cup that teacup gets turned upside down because of, in part, religion, in yes. part of institutional education, yes. government, government inf infringement. Uh, family dynamics. Family dynamics. Mm -hmm. All that turns that teacup tea tea cup cup over. over. Yes. And the world can be a really scary place for most of us. And if we haven't had support, love, nurturing, caregiving early in our childhoods, it makes it much more difficult to approach life from a less fearful place. The, you know, that's, I, I always talk, Kimberly, when I, when I have lectures on, on health care. I'm not talking health insurance. I'm talking actually caring for the body and supporting mm -hmm. the body because there's a confusion there for a lot of people. But um, medicine kind of dictates by fear. Yes. And, and it puts you in a fear mode and you respond accordingly, sometimes not to your benefit. That's right. And so you, you, when you look at life without fear, you're actually having a much better experience in life. That's right. When you're not looking through the eyes of fear. Right. It's a filter. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be there, but it is there for most people to some degree. What, what's one of the ways to eliminate that fear? Well, um, I've been studying for the last 25 years um, the way, help, ways to help people eliminate their fearful responses by thinking differently. Um, a lot of people with anxiety do something called catastrophic thinking. And so they are not in the here and now. They're projecting some potential future that's frightening to them. Yeah. They tell themselves a story about what could happen, and they're frightened in response to it. And this becomes a patterned way of living in the world. So catastrophic thinkers are always anxious, and they're never here present in the moment to enjoy life. Um, conversely, if you're depressed, you tend to ruminate about the past. So you're kind of stuck in the past, and you can't see your way into a decent future or a healthy future. And so being able to bring yourself into the present moment with various techniques that you can learn in therapy, um, either from the future, that's scary, bring it back, or from the past, that's scary, bring it forward into the now. Living in the now is healthy. So you're not enjoying what you're doing right now because you're worrying about either the past or the future. Yes, and most and of the so time true. you're doing it unconsciously. Yes. It's not even happening at your conscious awareness. So part of my job is to bring it into your conscious awareness and then help you shift your thinking or your feelings into the present moment so you can be here now. So you come upon this by not only medical training, but more of a kind of a spiritual training as well. Right. Well, I'm classically trained as a psychotherapist, so mm -hmm. I have all of those um, arrows in my quiver to offer people cognitive behavioral therapy, um, hypnotherapy, a lot of the other um, more traditional talk therapies. So but then I expand it way beyond that to add more arrows in my quiver to help people. Which makes you far more effective, uh, effective in my I opinion. I believe so. In, in re actually obtaining results for people. Yes, I believe so. Yeah, I, I do too. And I, I kind of approach my aspect of my traditional medical training with some of the things that you're talking about, and I see it work. Right. And, it, and it's absolutely That's what's extraordinary, it's yeah. and it's what makes um, the work so enjoyable and such a delight and joy for me because I get to see people transform before my very eyes. And yeah. when you can offer that to the world, it's a wonderful thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So some of these therapies, like as a massage therapist, what does massage do for this? Well, I don't actually do massage. I got a massage license in order to be able to touch people because as a psychotherapist, you can't. Yeah. So this offers me the opportunity to work both in the body and with talk therapy in the mind. Um, so I do a modal a several modalities called uh, craniosacral therapy. Would you explain that for us? Sure. Oh, boy. That's a big one. Um, the short version. <laughs> the short version because I could take four days yeah, talking okay, about it, right? Um, the craniosacral therapy is a very light, hands-on touch therapy. It's done fully clothed on a treatment table, and it involves very gentle pressures on the bones of the head, the bones of the spine, and the bones of the pelvis. Um, there is a rhythm in the body that's not much talked about. It's the very first rhythm that develops in gestation in utero, and it's the very last rhythm that ends at the end of your life.
and it's a, the rhythm of the movement of the craniosacral fluid, the cerebrospinal fluid, through the craniosacral system, which is your head, your spinal cord, and the sacrum of the pelvis. So there's this movement of this fluid, which is corresponded to with movement of the bones. And when you have a proper alignment of the body and you have freedom of restriction of this fluid movement, um, the cranial rhythm goes 13 times a minute on a normal, healthy person. If you have a fever or if you're really sick, the cranial rhythm increases in frequency. And if you're very, very, if you're oxygen deprived or if you're really, really um, like uh, brain disordered or if you have a neurological condition or if you are in a deteriorating um, health condition, the craniosacral rhythm slows way down and sometimes you may only get three to four pulses a minute. So what happens when the craniosacral rhythm pulses is the head expands and contracts and it expands and contracts and it, if I'm holding the head here and the tailbone here, the rhythm you can feel the bones moving in synchrony like this. And this is a healthy rhythm and most people who come to me don't have a healthy rhythm. They've had a concussion, they've had a brain injury, they've had um, surgery or an illness a fall. or a fall or a car accident or a trauma of some kind, even emotional trauma, can set the rhythm off right. and to bring it back into synchrony and harmonious movement is the goal of the treatment and people, I've seen people with long-standing anxiety disorders have that disappear when the cranial rhythm is corrected. Yeah. Yeah, I always tell people we're nothing but a tube of, of, of fluid, <laughs> we are. Of, of electricity, electricity and, and if fluid. there's a kink in it somewhere, we're it in stops trouble the because flow. it stops the flow. That's correct, yeah. yeah. So the craniosacral therapy releases whatever is stopping the flow. Yeah. And how does an emotional impact stop that flow? Well, for it's, you talked about the chakras. Uh, the chakras are energy centers in the body, and when we are experiencing an emotional trauma, the energy of that trauma, even if it's just words, actually enters into the body. And if the trauma is to the heart, for example, somebody saying, I don't love you anymore. If you didn't expect that and you're shocked by it, you will have an impact of energy. Ooh, I'm probably doing the mic thing. You'll probably have an Im impact of energy um, into the chest, which will affect the flow of energy through the heart. Over time, with more and more of those kinds of impacts, the heart chakra begins to close down and you don't get energy moving through the heart. You know what's interesting? And in, in my research over the years and the study of this, science, medical science, has found that there's a spot in the heart that has its own, own frequency that they cannot isolate. And mm -hmm. it moves around in the heart, so it's not in a stationary position. Right. It's different than the regular electrical potential of the heart. Mm -hmm. Totally different. Yeah. It's a field. It, yeah. It's an energy field it's around a, the it's heart. It's very minute, but very intense mm -hmm. and not localized. It, it's it never moves. in the same position all the time. And, and that's the physical heart you're talking about. I'm talking about the physical yeah. heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they're, they're, they find that, that the hypothalamus, not the, not the hypothalamus, but the, um, uh, I want to see it's, I, I've lost, it's not the pituitary. What's the, what's the third eye? Uh, the pineal. Pineal gland. Mm -hmm that there's an energy in the pineal gland that's like that too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, living in Arizona, I started studying local cultures, especially the Hope, Hopi, Hopi culture. Mm -hmm. And they're very spiritual, I think a very earthbound culture. Right. And they talked about the creator giving the people two forms of energy, one living in the pineal gland, the other one living in the heart. Mm -hmm. And here, medical science is just backing that just up. Just beginning to understand yeah. that, right. Yeah, and right. I think that's what you're, you're addressing. That's what you're talking about. It is. Yeah. It is. The heart, the heart is actually, the heart center, the energy center of the heart, is actually the gateway to um, the, the higher realms in the sense of our spiritual understanding of, um, of life. Um, the heart opening begins to activate your ability to connect to divinity. Uh, so we always want to ask, for, are, you, are you standing or walking in it with an open heart? Um, and most people are not, and they don't even know it, yeah. and b because we're all the walking wounded right. uh, on this planet. And um, 
life is hard. Like I said before, life is hard, families are hard, school is hard, culture is hard, religion can be hard on us, and we close down over time. We don't trust, we're fearful, and we don't believe or trust in love. Yeah. So opening the heart is the first step to opening yourself to a more divine understanding and uh, a connection to the divine. It sounds what I call woo-woo. I used to I call know. it woo-woo. But, but medical science is, is justifying it. They're, they're finding all of these things to be the case. That, these are, that this is truth, right. Yeah. And uh, we're having a meeting of science and um, spirituality uh, is beginning to converge, uh, it, most likely in the area of the quantum physics, where we're beginning to understand what energy actually is and how it behaves and who we are as an energetic being. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a big difference between dogma of religion Yes. And what you're talking about. Yes, very different. Yeah. Very different. So what are some of the other modalities that you perform at the, at, with your therapies? I've created a modality called Energy Alignment and Connection, which is a step beyond craniosacral therapy. It, it kind of stands on the great shoulders of the founders of craniosacral therapy, which actually allows me to um, align the energy body to the physical body. So if you've had a whiplash injury and you've um, had a, your head go like this and then bounce back, which is what whiplash is, and you sometimes you get a little bit of brain injury in that. Because um, the brain swells. The brain swells. And depending on the velocity and the force of the whip uh, during a car accident, for example, or a fall, um, you actually can leave an imprint of the energy of your head out here. Uh. And when you whip back, you can leave an energy imprint of your head in the back. And of course, then the neck energy goes with it to hold the head energy there. So when I assess people with my hands, I can actually feel where their body is now misaligned with their energy body. And I've been gifted with the ability to put that back. And it is a good. Realign it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I think everybody kind of has that. A lot of people, it becomes suppressed as we talked mm -hmm. about. But I think there are some people that are just more in tune to that and, and, and really can call it a gift. That's true. That's yeah. true. In fact, when I started my training doing craniosacral, the teacher said, in 10 or 15 years, you're going to have the hands that can feel what I feel, but you don't have it now. Uh -huh. So with comp repetitive practice and time spending with just developing the sensitivity in your hands, you're actually building neural networks in your brain associated with sensation in your hand. Well, you know, here's another. I, I, I keep wanting to relate this to, to medical science yeah. because that's people's mind thought. That's right. All right. But you know that fascia that we have that covers our muscles and mm -hmm. everything? We pull it off of a stake. Yep. That is the, the, the network of, of nerves that all the electrical pathways move through. It is the network that the electrical and the energetic pathways move through right. almost like a, a, an ocean under the ocean. Absolutely. And it yeah. moves through the fascia. And amazingly, fascia surrounds every structure in the body. Every organ, every, every tissue. Every organ, every tissue, yes. every bone is surrounded by fascia. So I work in the fascia, and I release restrictions in the fascia, and suddenly the body self-regulates and gets better. Yeah, it's amazing. And then yeah. I, I'm, I'm real big on educating people on thyroid function. Mm -hmm. And the thyroid controls all of that. It does. And that's the, the biggest misunderstood, misdiagnosed, underdiagnosed undertreated and mistreated oh organ my golly, in the whole body. Isn't that the truth? And when you have a whiplash injury, two or three years later, your thyroid tanks. Well, you know, what's interesting <laughs> And then is you're in chronic pain, and uh, nobody knows why. I don't want to you know, get started on thyroid, because <laughs> okay. I, I go off on it, but I just want to make this one comment. Where is that thyroid placed? It's placed over your voice box. Mm -hmm. The vibration caused from the voice box stimulates the function of the thyroid. Right. What an ingenious place to put it. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Right? Yeah. But anyway, back to you. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so all of this, you can see how all this stuff's meshing up. It and, does and, mesh. And, and it's, it's amazing. Right. So I, the energy alignment, I do, on top of the craniosacral. Um, and then I went back to training, and I got trained as an energy healer. So that's a whole other category. Is that Reiki? It's not, it's not Reiki, it's called cellular expansion. Okay. And it's a very profound um, set of frequencies of energy that I was trained to be able to deliver through my hands. And I use that as an adjunct to the psychotherapy because it helps to bring to the surface the issues and the feelings and the memories that you don't have consciously. So it brings things up to the surface so that we can then deal with it psycho in the psychotherapy. Are you a Reiki master? No. No. Okay. 
I am an energy master. Energy master. Mm -hmm. But not identified as a Reiki master. As a Reiki master. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you're familiar with Reiki, though. I am, Reiki sure. does. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Other modalities that you Yeah. Um, let's see. The psychotherapy. And I went back and got trained in EMDR. Okay, which I'm is not familiar with MDR. eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Okay. And this has been around for about 30 years. Um, it uses the rapid eye movement across the visual field by following a trigger or a finger. And it actually begins to help people process trauma. So many times people are way overwhelmed by a traumatic experience. They cannot integrate their feelings, their thoughts, their, their beliefs, or the shattering of their beliefs. Um, because of a traumatic event. And so um, they suppress or they dissociate those experiences from their consciousness. But they walk around traumatized and wounded and acting that way. And PTSD is one example of that, post-traumatic stress disorder. So this modality was developed um, quite by accident. It was kind of a serendipitous find that people were able to actually process trauma by moving their eyes rapidly across their visual field. Mm -hmm. And it almost is like um, the ability to accelerate the emotional processing for the nervous system. And a few sessions of, e of EMDR can help someone who's, been, who's suffered perhaps a rape or who has suffered a traumatic um, event, um, any kind of traumatic event. And so EMDR is really helpful for PTSD and even depression. See all these events anxiety. that you're talking about, all these, these, I don't want to call them diseases, what would you call them? Um, traumatic events, tragic di events. Diagnosis of, of things, let's call it that. Oh, diagnoses, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, traditional medicine just wants to medicate you so, that That's you, correct. so you don't remember them or forget about That's them. That's correct. And you're walking around through life numb. Uh, or a vegetable. Yeah and, yeah, and this is approach is to get rid of them, look for the cure, look for, just move them on. Correct. We don't yeah. want to mask the symptoms because right. the symptoms have great meaning. We want to bring the symptoms up into awareness and then understand what story they're telling. How are patients referred to you? Uh, doctors, uh, other therapists who don't do what I do, um, word of mouth. Uh, if I see one person and we get a great result, seven other people will walk in my door at some point in the future because they've told them yeah, how effective it absolutely. was. Absolutely. Right. So you do something uh, called soul, soul, soul tapping. tapping. Would That's you my newest. Would you define that? Sure. Um, soul tapping is a modality that is a combination of several other modalities combined in a new way. And when I developed this, I had the inspiration of adding sacred geometry to the, um, uh, the combination of other modalities and began to discover I was getting amazing results I've never found with anything else. So um, the modalities that I've combined are EMDR, which I just talked to you about, um, something called EFT, which is emotional freedom technique, and some people refer to it as tapping. And that's where you find a meridian point on your meridian lines, an acupuncture point, and you tap on it firmly for about 10 to 12 times. And you tap on certain points in a, in a specific uh, sequence, and all of a sudden the symptom begins to disappear in the moment. So for example, if you're very anxious or you're having a panic attack, there are a there's a sequence of tappings points that you can do and in about five to ten minutes you can actually divert yourself from having a panic attack. Does that work for pain as well? It also works for pain. It works for um, the stories behind a disease, the story behind an illness. Why is somebody needing to manifest an illness or a disease at this point in their life? Um, you can discover that th through the use of EMDR and tapping. And the third modality is called TFT which is thought field therapy. And this has been around for 25 or 30 years, was developed by a psychologist named Roger Callahan, and well-researched. And it also involves tapping, but it involves other things like moving the eyes, humming a tune, and counting. And it actually inputs new information into the nervous system. So by doing all that, you're kind of creating a new frequency? You are. Um, what you're actually doing is taking thoughts and beliefs that have a very low frequency vibration, and you are eliminating those from the nervous system, from the pattern of your nervous system. Then you use the TFT with the eye movements, and you input something of a higher vibration. So for example, I hate myself. 
your cells respond to that language. Your cells respond to the vibration of that. Well, I can attest to that because I, I, I do it as almost kind of an educational joke. And I, I, don't, I use that word joke lightly because it's kind of entertaining for people. Mm -hmm. But I'll do muscle testing on people and I'll tell them, say I hate myself and they have, can't, can't resist my arm, my That's pressure right. whatsoever. But I say, say I love myself. I can't pull their arm down. That's right. But the minute I say, I hate, my, have them say I hate myself, I put a little bit of pressure in their arm falls It breaks down. this electrical circuit of yeah. the body. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So the cells are responding to the yeah. language and the vibration of the words. And so when we input the new information to the nervous system with TFT, thought field therapy, um, and the eye movements, then the, the nervous system adopts the new higher belief system. So, so is that kind of an, an using intention? Using intention. It, it, intention setting, is always part of it. Are you it. setting an intention like, you know, I, 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 I want these thoughts out and, then, and they go? Yes. You have, you have to set that intention to do that? Well, you identify what the theme or the issue is you want to change. Okay. And then you identify eight beliefs that you hold about that thing. So if it's your self-worth, I'm no good, I can't do enough, to, nobody loves me, you know, you, what are these beliefs? And these are often unconscious beliefs, so it takes a little time to mine them from the depths of your, your yeah. psyche. Once you identify these eight beliefs, we then do eye movements in sacred geometric patterns across an eight-sided figure, and it generates new feelings. So if you do that first with the beliefs you no longer want, the r stuff you're ready to get rid of, and then you do it again a week later with new beliefs which generate new feelings that are of a higher frequency. Yeah. So you go from despair and anger and sadness to joy, happiness, and peace. You input the new one into the nervous system, and then two weeks later your life is different. I've had people with addictions stop using addictive substances after one session of this. This is the reason I don't like amazing. to listen to the news in the morning because I don't want those bad thoughts. Kimberly, Isn't we're at the, the end truth? of the show. Isn't that, that was the a truth? quick, informative show. I so appreciate you coming on. Would Thank you please you. tell our audience how they can get a hold of you? Sure. Where do I look? Just look, right, look, look at the camera. And, and I can be reached at 724-531-7219. Um, and my website is www.centerforholistictherapy. Dot com. And they have that on a graphic. Thank yes. you so much, Kimberly, for coming on Healthy Pets, Healthy People. Remember, a healthy pet is a happy pet, and when you're healthy, you're happy too. And you can also listen to me live every Saturday morning, AM 1250, The Answer, at 9 o'clock AM. We'll see you next time on Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. Bye-bye.